Hey everyone, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them at me. I've got a few questions this week. Um, Henry asked, did you self-publish and why? Okay, so the, the reason I, I did self-publish and the reason I self-published is because um, I had all of the resources in place already. So publishing houses normally provide you with website, social media, um, marketing, printing, and uh, I already have my company called Gazoo, where we do have all of that resources. We can design, we can do web development, we can print. So I just ran everything through that, and um, said so that that's the reason why I self-published. And I think that's really important as an entrepreneur to enable yourself to be able to um, to be able. And yeah, so that I think it's important as an entrepreneur to enable yourself to do things like self-publishing, um, to get all of the things in place if you're thinking of about being an author um, in any business. Um, okay, we're live back on Facebook again. I don't know what's happening on Facebook today. It's on and off. Instagram is live the whole time. So I think, um, so the question was, did I self-publish and why? And yes, I did. And because I had the resources to do it in house, I think that's important as an entrepreneur to equip yourself with all of the tools you need to get to that point and to use those tools to get you there instead of having to, you know, have expenses, expenses to try and do that. Okay, so that was the first question from Henry. The second question from Michelle was, how do you make money? Um, Okay, great. So how do you make money um, from Michelle if you don't have anything at the moment? Um, so the, the first answer is all of us have energy and people asking you um, to, to do some drawings for them. Okay, Facebook's back on again. Um, just to catch up, um, I'm talking about leveraging your energy and time um, to generate some income for you. And I'm using the example as a fine art artist that draws fine art drawings. And I'm saying that you can actually use energy and time, create some drawings, create the social media platforms for yourself like YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, post your drawings up there, let people see them and let people become aware of what you're doing. And then people might start asking you to, to um, draw drawings for them. And then you can also work smartly if you understand the, the business basics and, and take this a bit further. Instead of just selling your drawings, you can also start creating online courses where you teach people how to draw. I bet there's a lot of people out there that would like to know how to do fine art drawings and you can then teach them um, over YouTube channels, over Skype, you can give online courses and you can sell that. And then further down the line, you can start to create like events where people can come to and do like a class and, and draw with all of their, their friends and people and you can charge for that as well. And then you can start writing ebooks and blogs and, and uh, books about fine arts and how to do it and everything about that. So the possibilities are endless, endless. You can start selling merchandise like t-shirts with fine art drawings on them. And you know, really just create your own market and create a following and then capitalize from that. So that's how you can generate income just by using um, energy, time and business understanding. And then you can generate some income for yourself with your passion, with what you want to do. And then we also have a question from Rudolf. Uh, what is the best way to begin? Hi, Henry Krell. Um, good to see you guys joining. So the question from Rudolf is, how, what is the best way to begin? So I talked um, to another person the other day about starting big, jumping in, starting big. And they asked me that question. Should I just go for it and go big or should I start small? And I told the person that if they went and bought all of the stock that they wanted to sell and if they then uh, got an office, hired staff, it would have been a lot, a lot of overhaul, but starting smart. Okay, so we're, so we're talking about this guy that wants to start a business. He thought about buying all of the stock, getting the office, hiring all of the staff. But I'm saying that when things go south, 
or when there's something you make a mistake people make mistake in business and you are going to make a lot of mistakes then there's a lot of capital at stake um, there's large overheads at stake and um, you, you may end up um, losing a lot of money in business so I'm saying let's look at the lean startup method so you start small and as your business grows you can increase quantity and you can increase overheads um, there's the story about Sarah Blakely um, where she created Spanx it's the pants that the women wear underneath their pants and um, she started from a bedroom literally from a bedroom and she was making these Spanx and Oprah saw it on social media where she was marketing etc and Oprah called her and said we want to come and look at your offices LA. good to see you guys as well so we're having trouble with Facebook a bit on the side so we're losing connection the whole time so I'm just going to summarize so Sarah Blakely she started small from a bedroom Oprah called her she didn't have anything set up yet she quickly went set up a factory set up staff set up all her machines and everything and then when Oprah walked in there everything was set up and everything was ready but she started lean she started small lower overheads um, not a lot of initial capital investment that decreases the risk and it enables you to go out ha do business have fun and make some mistakes without losing a lot of money and then only when you get that sale when you get that business when your business starts growing you can increase your capital investment and you can increase the risk that you take because you're also learning through the process and at that stage it's not um, that likely that you would be making big mistakes where you could lose all of that initial capital investment. Okay guys, so that was the questions from Henry, um, Michelle and Rudolf. Um, any other questions? If you want to send some question through, if there's anything on your mind that you would like to know and um, that you would like to talk about, um, we can talk about it live and um, give some feedback uh, yeah, I think it's just important to be interactive and um, if you guys have questions um, that we can talk about uh, it also you know helps other people that have similar questions to answer those and I think it's important especially um, in the social media age to be interactive on social media and to be able to speak to people directly even though you can't um, travel there physically or be there physically okay so yeah, just to summarize um, some of the questions that we've talked about for the people that's only joining now um, we talked about Henry he asked if I self-published I said yes and I told him because I already had the resources and it's important in business to establish all of your resources um, to enable you to get there and to be enable enable you to to build that basis for your business and your brand um, Michelle asked how do you make money without having any initial capital so I talked about using your time and energy and business savvy um, which business savvy you can get by reading books um, I mean yeah, you can read all of these books and um, you know just <laughs> they just these are just the ones that's like yeah um, but you can you can read all of these books and get your mindset right about business and how business work and um, then just use your energy and time and make smart decisions to turn your passion into a business so look at the earlier part of this video where I explained um, how a fine art artist can actually make money from that passion and um, sell what, what he or she is doing um, to enable them to do that passion full time I mean that's where we're all going we want to be financially independent so that we can do what we would like to do and get paid for it and live life and experience life. And then the final question by Rudolf was, what's the best way to begin? And go Google Lean Startup. That's the best way to begin. Minimize your initial overheads and your initial capital investment to decrease the risk because you are going to make mistakes and um, then you don't lose as much capital. And if you do a Lean Startup, if things go south, um, you didn't invest a lot of capital, it was more time and energy and business savvy. And um, you can actually build your business and ramp up your capital investment and resources as you go along. Okay guys, I think, yeah, I think that's all for today. 
Uh, here's a question from Salandri. What investment would you say is best to start with? Okay, Salandri, it, it, it depends on how much you have. Um, if you have a lot of capital, I, I would say I love property investment. I think it's a great investment to start with. Um, hi, Jelly Bean. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great investment to start with if you do property investment, if you have a lot of capital. It's stable, it's always growing, and um, I, I like it because you can actually touch it and walk into it and open the door and unlock the door, and you know, I like that. But if you don't have a, that, um, that big of amount of capital, if you have a smaller amount, I think you can always go for a good mixed investment. There's a lot of great investment houses, um, uh, that, that you can go look up. Um, just go check out, um, for example, Coronation, Alan Gray, um, all of those places. Uh, they have good mixed investments. And just make sure that you, that you don't put your money, uh, keep your money in the bank if you have some investment money. Um, because, I mean, you get like 6 to 5% maybe on, on, your, on your money where my grandma gets literally like 13% on her mixed investment. So, <laughs> so if you have some medium amount of capital, put it in a mixed investment, start growing that investment, growing, 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 until you do have enough capital to invest in something like property. The other thing is if you, the other option that you also have, hey Quintus, good to see you online as well. So the other option that you also have um, when you don't have a lot of capital is to join forces with other investors that also have a similar amount of capital that you do and then you can together inform an investment group that can invest in property or make a smart investment in uh, mixed investment like I talked about just now. So that's another option. If you do not have any initial capital, okay, if, you, if you're starting from scratch then I'll say the best investment you can make is in your skill set and in your knowledge about business. Okay, so, um, Salandri, what is it that you want to do? If you want to um, bake cupcakes and you want to do that for a living, invest in your skill and knowledge about baking cupcakes. Invest in um, how to in business knowledge on how to change that cupcakes into a you know growing business that can expand and that can become more and more and more. So yeah, I would say if you don't have any capital at the moment, invest in yourself by investing in your skills, investing in your business understanding, and then you would always be able to, to sell that again. If you have business understanding, if you understand business and how to change your passion into income, you will always be able to do that again. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, the question was, uh, what investment would you say is the best? If you have a lot of capital, I love property investment, so go for that. It's stable, it's solid, it always keeps growing. If you have medium amounts of capital, look for a good mixed investment. There's a lot of um, financial houses out there that provide good mixed investments. And if you have no capital at all, invest in skill and, minds and mindset and um, yourself develop yourself to become better at what you want to do you can always also invest in a small business like if you have a little bit of capital you can invest it to grow a business and then make even more money from that that is also obviously great just make sure that you understand financial basics first before you do that so that you don't lose that investment okay so Leon asks how do you decide how do you decide in what property to invest in that is a great question. Good one, Leah. Okay, so you should always look at the ROI. It's the return on investment. Okay, so let's use this example. You can go and buy a flat in Hatfield for, let's say, two million. Okay, a nice flat right next to campus. You can buy it for, let's say, two million. However, you can only rent it out for like 7,000 maybe 8,000 max a month. So you invested 2 million, but you're getting 8,000 back, okay? And um, obviously there's expenses like um, water and lights, um, Wi-Fi if you have to put that in, um, cleaning staff, all of that type of things, okay? So you need to keep that in mind as well. 
the other option is to buy a house like let's say on the other side of the mountain i don't know if you guys know pretoria like let's say in queenswood or kilner park or a suburb not not in the prime spot like right next to campus in Atfield, but more in like a suburb there you might pay one million for a house okay but now it's a bigger house it's a bigger yard okay so you can have multiple tenants on that yard and let's say you can only ask like 2,000 or 3,000 rand for rent, um, you can have multiple 3,000 rands. So let's say you can eventually get like 20,000 rand or 15,000 rand from that investment. So let's look at the two options again. In the prime area, you need to have 2 million to invest, but you only get 7,000, 8,000 rand back in rent. In the little bit less prime area, more like the suburb area, you only need to invest 1 million but you can get like 10 or 20,000 back in rent. So that is the difference. That how you choose what property to invest in. You need to look at the area and you need to look at the return on investment. So go Google how to calculate your ROI. It's called return on investment. And when you decide what property to invest in, go calculate that first. It's basically all the income that you get minus all your expenses on a monthly basis. Then you, then you multiply that by 12 to get your yearly net income and you divide that by the amount of initial investment. So that's how you do that. Okay, guys. Great. I think it was a great session. Um, we had some, just to summarize, we had some questions from Henry, Michelle, Rudolf, Shalandri and Leon. I think um, you can go watch the video again if you just joined from the start. It will be on my story and it will be live. Um, on, on the groups and on the pages. Um, yeah, thank you so much for joining. I think it's important to do this. I think it's important to get in contact and to talk about these things, to ask questions, to answer them, and to, you know, provide value. I think that is really important. So cool, guys. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of the day. Um, follow us on Facebook and Instagram to stay updated. I normally post in the morning. I'm going to be live at 3. And it's normally on Tuesdays at three. So if you want, if you have some more questions, join the next one next week, and then we'll see if we can answer them. Okay, great guys. Have a great.